Welcome to our November SBDM webinar. There we go. So today we're going to talk about comprehensive support and improvement or CIS schools that exit status and the council reinstatement. Uh, schools that have exited CSI status in October. SBDM implications for schools that have been identified um, for CSI or TSI. It, council verification data and then part three of the comprehensive school improvement plan. K KRS 163-46 states that when a school exits CSI status, uh, they are eligible for reinstatement of their SBDM two years after they exited status. So the schools that exited this year on October 31st of 2023 uh, would be eligible for reinstatement as of November 1st, 2025. And it's the local Board of Education that has the discretion to reinstate the school's SBDM and that local board of education may have also adopted a specific criteria before they reinstate the council. So, you know, we just encourage you that if you have newly exited a CSI status, just to consult with your local policies to see what that criteria is um, so that all of those could be met before the local board of education reinstates your school's council. So and during that time, so during the time of actual CSI identified status, as well as during that two year exit period, um, the superintendent re maintains that decision making authority. And you would indicate that the in the in the database that the school has an advisory leadership team. So during those two years post um, CSI status exiting. The, the school will have an advisory leadership team. Congratulations to the schools that exited CSI status. So these schools exited status on October 31st of 2023. So again, it's going to be two years um, before the local Board of Education would be able to reinstate council. So we're looking at November 1st, 2025. And like I said before, um, in the meantime, they're going to continue to maintain that advisory leadership team. I've, and I have received some some questions as I'm um, working through the database uh, as far as training for advisory leadership teams. So those individuals do not have to be trained for SBDM, uh, but we do suggest that they are trained on some sort of open records, open meetings, because those meetings are still subject to those laws. So schools that have been identified as CSI lose their SBDM council authority after the release of the audit findings. Uh, for schools that have been identified as TSI or the targeted support and improvement status, uh, they will maintain their council authority. If you we we have a list of um, implications for SBDM, uh, CSI and TSI schools. Um, a lot of it is what uh, we have talked about or what I've shared as far as um, losing status and then uh, having an alt even two years after they have exited. But I'm, I'm happy to go ahead and share that. Um, it is also on the SBDM web page. Before we move on to talk about the council verification data and just kind of where we are with that, does anyone have any questions on CSI or TSI schools? As related to SBDM, because that's really um, the extent of my knowledge as far as that goes. The last month, in lieu of our traditional SBDM webinar, uh, we hosted a drop in office hours. And I just want to thank everyone that joined and participated in that. And I, I hope that you found it helpful as you were entering in data.
so the KRS 160-345 requires reporting of council members in the SBDM council verifica verification database by November 1st. If your school has been identified as CSI or was recently released and is within that two years period, um, you're going to enter in your school's advisory leadership team. Um, as of right now, I have a spreadsheet that I'm working on um, that you know lists the council members and whatnot. So I'm re I've been reaching out to, to districts individually and just asking clarification questions. I I recognize that's it's challenging sometimes to get everyone trained. Um, so what I'm looking for is that there is a um, continuous effort to get those people trained. And just the reminder that, you know, there's a statutory requirement to be trained in order to be on SBDM. Um, so that's really what I'm looking for as far as that. And just kind of a general update of we have elections going on. Um, we know this is occurring and whatnot. We are currently in phase three of the comprehensive school improvement plan. So school councils with the input of parents, faculty and staff are to develop the CSIP and that CSIP must be submitted to the Cognia continuous improvement platform by January 1. Schools must address critical needs specified in the needs assessments and align strategies and activities to those needs. And then when you're developing the CSIP, please keep in mind the required goals for elementary and middle schools, which are uh, state assessment results in reading and mathematics, state assessment results in science, social studies and writing, uh, the achievement gap, English learner progress and quality of school climate and safety. And the high school contains the same goals as the elementary and middle school, but it also contains a post-secondary readiness and graduation rate goal. Uh, so so that's what that's what I got for today. Um, thank you for attending. I'm going to be dropping the attendance verification in the chat. You are welcome to hang out and ask any questions that you may have, uh, but otherwise I hope that you all enjoy the upcoming break and have a wonderful time with family and friends.